Good morning. Bringing you out here to uh, let you see my goats. There goes Jack again. Jack, don't already start. No. Anyway. Good morning, babies. Good morning. Are you guys soaking up the sunshine? They're still scared of me. Um, this one, Coco, I'm not sure what's going on with her. She's actually lost some weight since I've got her. And she's eating. I've seen her eating. She just got dewormed before I got her. The day I got her, I watched the previous owner, you know, she gave them both deworm her, deworm her. She's still super scared of me. I tried to give her some, um, some stuff this morning, like that stuff you give them in high stress situations. Jack! No! No! No. Dang dog. Anyway, the stuff you give him in high stress situations, which I gave him some one dose of the day I got him home. And but I haven't. I gave her a second dose this morning, Squeaky. But she's she's a little. She's not as uh, skittish. Like, it didn't really take anything for me to go up to her and hold her and give her that dose. This one, on the other hand, started fighting me and pulling away. So, I was like, well, I'm probably doing more damage than good at this point. If it's supposed to be something to help him in a high-stress situation. And I'm sitting there stressing her out even more. So, I just stopped. Um, their mineral lick I have in there, in their shed... They have not even touched the whole time I've had them. So I don't know if that's a problem. I'm getting ready to go to back to the farm store and getting a different kind of goat mineral. Um, their baking soda's in there. They haven't touched that. And I know minerals and baking soda, I thought were supposed to be free choice to let them eat whenever. Well, they've not touched either one. They have eaten their their feed that their regular feed they get every day and then I have another kind of feed it's almost like I don't know it's more, it's not it's not a sweet feed but it it's not it's got more um, a variety of stuff in it to eat besides just the pellets they get I gave them some of that today they, they don't get that every day they just get I've given it to them twice since I've had them and then their hay that they have They've been eating that. And they've been drinking their water because their water's pretty low. I need to refill it today. But this is pretty much all they do. See, they're going back in. Babies! I don't know. I could be overreacting. I just don't want anything wrong with them. I've never had goats before, so I don't know. Um, I did read an article just this morning. A lady said it took <clears throat> it took almost a year for her two goats to actually friendly up to her, is what she said, what she called it. And uh, but she said now they they're you know they run up to them and and play around just as much as the other goats but when they first got them she said it took a, a year for them to actually warm up and you know have fun so I've been putting off and putting off and uh, putting off mowing my yard because it's a field of purple nettle and henbit and dandelions and I'm sure other things I don't even know yet. 
but I seriously need to mow it. You can see all my red buds over here. I'm gonna go gather more. In a minute, I'll take you inside and show you my red bud syrup I made, and I'll kind of explain to you how I made it, so you can see see that. Oh, I'll show you this. Walk over here. Oh, let me let me pan my yard real quick so y'all can see how horrible <laughs> my yard looks. Y'all, look at this. I haven't been able to identify these little things yet. And these are all over. So if you know what these are, if you're watching and you know what these are, leave a comment and let me know. See, here's something else. No clue what this is. But yeah, purple nettle. Purple nettle for days. Four days. Okay, let's walk over here. Okay, first of all, here is my radishes. They're doing fabulous. But y'all look. Do you see that? It's my yellow squash. It's from my seeds from last year. So far, oh, is that one? Oh, there's another one. Look at him. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see on the video. Coming up. So, so far, I have one, two, three. There's one peeking up right there in that one. Yep. And I have chives. One little thing right here, chives. Growing. And then one little tomato so far here. And one in the back so far. There. And then you can see the green here. That's my basil. So things are starting to bud out. Or to sprout. But I will probably... Oh my gosh, all the dandelions. I have so many dandelions. Um... I don't, I want to mow because I'm tired of it looking like this, but I don't want to mow because there's so much stuff I can use in here. There are certain places I do not pick from because my dogs pee in it. Um, I know there are certain places they don't go, which I don't pick, or that's where I pick from. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going to pick where I know that they go to the bathroom in. Um hen bit for days right here see what is this I'm, I'm gonna have to dig this up you guys see this I'm not gonna turn the camera on do you see this like this has to be something oh there's one of my cats Mike. I'm gonna dig this up because I honestly, I think it's something, I think, I don't think it's a flower. That's kind of a random place in the middle of the yard to, to be growing a flower. I don't know. And I have clover for days, too. I if I can find a four-leaf clover. I don't know. Well, good grief. See, Mike, the skinny bush one, I just started walking that way and she bolted. Freaked out. There's my lilac bush and something's broke it. The end of it is dangled down. That's nice. And this blueberry bush is doing good. 
taken off nicely. This one over here, not so much. Oh, but it's got a little bloom on it, which I'll probably not let it do that this year because I want it to I want it to give all of its energy to its root system the first year and growing that and establishing that. So I will take that off of there. Mara. This one doesn't. My strawberry plants are, I don't really know. You can see them. Oh, I got a bloom. Here, here some. Here, right here. Here. Oh. There's some. Do you see these irises? Okay, back there in the woods, there is like a huge patch of irises just randomly growing in the middle of the woods. So, and they're all like, when they're in full bloom, they're all different shades of purple, really to a really deep purple to a really light purple. So, I took some last year and transplanted them up here. I will look inside and show you my, my um, red bud jelly. I am going to go around and pick some more red buds today and make more, not jelly, it's not jelly, it's red bud syrup that I can later use for jelly or tea or whatever because I learned that to... to to go ahead and make something with it and it stores for six months in the fridge but I'm going to go in and show you that and uh, kind of explain that process to you okay here it is this is the red bed water and I wanted to hold it up so you guys could see it a little bit through in a window good light going through this is the red bed water this is just after letting it steep, or, well, I added, you remember in my other video, it was one of these full of red bud um, flowers. And then I filled it with boiling water, let it steep for 24 hours, but I didn't have enough pectin to turn it into anything at that point. So I found out you can make a syrup out of it, red bed syrup. And this is the color of the syrup. And it's a little thicker. I mean, it's it's not near as watery as this. All this is is two cups of the red bed water and then four cups of sugar and like one to one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice. And all I did, which look, here's my pan from yesterday. I haven't, I'm bad. I haven't even washed it out. All I did was bring the water like this, bring this water to a low boil. Like I kept this, my thing set between here and here the whole time see this is low this is medium so here here and here the whole time I kept it here a lot and then once I could tell it was like real really starting to heat up I, I moved it down because you don't want to you don't want it to burn and you don't want it to come to a rolling full boil um, so two cups of, of red bed water four cups of sugar and then stir and stir and stir. You're stirring pretty much the whole time until the sugar is dissolved. And then once this sugar was dissolved completely and it was at a nice low boil, that's when I added the, um, the lemon juice. This can last, I read, up to six months. Stop blurring. Focus in. 
focus. There we go. This can last up to six months in the, the refrigerator in this, in this state. Um, I don't know how much this is. This will last. This was just left over because this was the two cups rose water, not rose water, red bed water. And this was the leftover. So I just kept it and I'll make, I can make tea out of it or heat it up and put a little bit of sugar in it and have a rosebud drink. This, you can put directly into tea. Like if you have a glass of hot tea or even cold tea, um, just like iced tea, and put some of this in it, this will give it a nice flavor and it'll sweeten it up a bit. And also you can use, this is the base you can use to make jelly out of this too. So that I can just heat this back up and bring it to a boil, a low boil, and then add the pectin to it and uh, just go from there, like follow it from there. But this, this should be what I could make the jelly out of. Um, and ice cream topping. I'll show you the violet stuff still. This is the wild violet. I just put wild violet syrup because that's basically what it is because it didn't set. It's a little thicker than this, obviously, because see that? Because this has a this has one box of pectin in it. So it was enough to make it pretty thick, but not thick enough for jelly. You might you guys remember Rize, my dog, Rize. She's just sitting there watching me talk. She's like, who the freak are you talking to? Because she sees nobody else except me. And she's just watching. And if you see her up in the back of you know, my house, is not like super clean. In fact, she's drug her blankets out. <laughs> Reese. What are you doing? <laughs> she's a goof. Um. I'm trying to think, oh, yesterday I didn't video, I, I know I should, um, yesterday I made a lunch and I don't know, I know some of you who are watching this follow me on Instagram, um, so you thought you saw the picture, but I made lunch yesterday, and I, I paused for a second because I was getting ready to promote my Instagram. But I forget my username on Instagram. So, when I'm going back editing this, I will put it on the screen to so you guys can go follow me on Instagram. Now, my Instagram, let me tell you, is of pictures of my family and my, you know, my grandkids, and my animals and um, not a whole lot of this self-sufficient thing because I just started this. In fact, I think I only have maybe one or two pictures of this self-sufficient lifestyle type pictures. Um, but I'm starting to share things more on that. But I posted a picture yesterday of the lunch I made for me and my kid that lives here with me. Their name's Jeremiah, by the way. So if you hear me talk about Jeremiah, that's the child I have living here. They're not really a child, they're 20. Just throwing that out. Almost 21. That's my baby. Almost 21 years old. How did that even happen? Crazy. I wish I would have started this, this journey and had my kids raised like this because... I don't know. I think they would have benefited a lot more from it. I wish I could have, I wish I would have had the knowledge and the drive and whatever um, when they were little. Uh, I've, I've, for years, I've had this desire to want to learn, um, like, about herbs and the, the medicinal reasons and uses for them. Uh, so I've always had that desire. 
and I've always kind of, you know, researched here and there, but lately I've just been like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. And I put my mind to it and here I am. And anyway, back to lunch yesterday. I made a grilled cheese, but I went out and picked um, dandelion leaves, purple nettle leaves, and wild onions, and put that put those on the grilled cheese sandwich. It was so good. I also went mushroom hunting a couple days ago, and I found my first nine mushrooms, the morels. Um, so I, I, you know, I let those soak. The way I do it, I know there's probably people that do it different, but the way I do it, morels, is I, um, I let them soak in salt water for at least 24 hours, and every, you know, a couple t different times I'll go in and kind of, you know, lightly mix them around a little bit to try to break up the any dirt or stuff that's inside the little, the, you know, the spongy part. <laughs> whatever that's called. I'm so, you know, up with my words and terminology on that. And then, you know, I obviously rinse them off and then bread them and fry them. So we had the grilled cheese with that. We had the breaded and deep fried mushrooms. And I also breaded and deep fried more dandelions, the dandelion flowers. And then I went and got some more, um, purple nettle leaves, dandelion leaves, uh, and wild onions. And then kind of after I got done deep frying that stuff, the leftover grease that was still in the pan, I put all those leaves in a pan and kind of just sauteed them a little bit. And we had that and my lavender lemonade, which I only have a little bit left. We have been drinking it so much. This is all I have left. And this is kind of concentrated. Like you could, this would make a few cups, a few glasses still. Like I could probably fill this up to here. Probably up to here with water. This is, let me let it settle for a sec. That's almost eight ounces of fluid in that. So I could probably put it up to... 16 to 20 ounces of fluid of water and um, it would still taste good and even if I take it up and then put some of this this wild violet syrup in that it'll be yummy but I took some of that that violet violet um, lemonade to work the other day in one of the little jars I had like this I filled it up to let some of my co-workers take it uh, try some and I think they were I think they liked it um but anyway yesterday's lunch was amazing do you guys like how I get super sidetracked easy like I can go off on little rabbit trails and I can be talking about something and then a word that I'm saying triggers another thought and I start talking about that I don't know if that's just my makeup the way I am or if if I'm getting old. Well, I know I'm getting older, but I don't know if that's a side effect of it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. I think I've babbled on enough and I've updated you guys enough on things. Now, the next time I make this, the syrup... Because I am going to go pick out, pick more red buds here today and let them steep overnight. And so I can make more syrup tomorrow because I'm going to make sure my kids have some. Because I want each of my kids to have one of these full of red bud syrup that can last them at least for the summer. And maybe hopefully through the fall and winter. So probably not the was fall and winter because, well, the inch of the fall because it lasts six months in your fridge. And, by the way, I have five kids. Um, my oldest one, though, she lives in Idaho. She married a military guy, and they're stationed up there in Idaho. The other four are 
local around this area. Fairly local. The, the, the one of them, she, her and her husband just bought a house about a half an hour away from here. But, um, so, the rest of them are very pretty right here, local. Um, but I think that's it for now. Uh, but I'm getting ready to go. To, a couple things I gotta get done today. One, I need to freaking fold laundry. Two, I really need to mow, but I know that's not gonna get done today. Um, I'm going to pick more red buds though, because red buds is a time sensitive thing. Like my lawn will be there for forever. Red bud trees, they only bloom a certain stint of time and then they're done. So I need to do that while um, they're still out there and ready to be picked. And here's a quick side note. I, re I did some research. Some people harvest when they're getting the red buds, th they take them off the new, like they'll just pull down a branch. And this is what I did the first time the other day. But I, I read some things that you you shouldn't do that. Um, don't pull down the branch and take the the blooms right off the little branches that are just starting because um, no, the leaves will have a hard time growing on there, um, growing back. So they said to go farther in on the tree and closer to the the main branches as possible because those are more well established parts of the tree, which makes sense. So that's just a little side note. So when I go, to, go today, I will obviously do that. If I have to take any from the ends, it'll be very minimal um, that I do because I wanted to, you know, keep producing every year and, you know, bloom, bloom every year and leaf out every year. And then I need to go to the feed store and get some different kind of minerals for my goats because they're not eating the ones I have. Anyway, so you all have a great day. Stay away from each other. Wash your hands, you know, because the virus is still going around. Um, don't forget to click the subscribe button if you haven't yet. And once you click the subscribe button, a little bell will pop up click that too because that will notify you when I have put on a new video on here and then you'll go oh she posted a new video let's go see what she's talking about today but um and uh anyway hope you guys have a blessed day stay safe out there